when did it become popular just to dismiss our parents? They never dismissed us. And the biggest lie on the whole marriage thing is that the 50% divorce rate. Oh, you know, 50% of people, really? That's not true. If you start to read the facts, if you get married at 25 rather than at 18, your chances of divorce drop 24%. If you attend college, even for a day, your chances of divorce drop 13% lower. But today, nearly 4 in 10 people say marriage is just obsolete. Is it? This storm is severe. But we'll make it. We will make it. As long as we don't have materialism knitting us together. As long as that's not what's between the bricks, materialism. We have, a, we have debt beyond our wildest imagination. We have an exhausted military. I know the media has all forgotten about our men and women still in Afghanistan and Iraq, but a lot of Americans haven't. They're on the brink. They're on the brink. It's been a decade now. These soldiers, I was with uh, Marcus Luttrell at his wedding. One of the soldiers came back. He's a Navy SEAL. He had done nine tours. Nine. When is enough enough? Unsustainable debt, $14.3 trillion in our debt ceiling. All of this is going on. All of this is happening. And instead of preparing for a storm, Congress is making the storm stronger. The Senate passed this food safety bill. They claim it prevents outbreaks. What, oh, do we have a problem with it? I, I'm sorry, I, I have missed all those stories of the outbreaks. The 11% of America who trust Congress will blindly go, go along with this. But here's what this bill really does. It gives the FDA even more power and control. They can demand food recalls instead of requesting it now. The FDA has control over food imports, increase FDA inspections of food processing plants. Gee, I wonder if Cass Sunstein, who doesn't want you to eat meat, could maybe price us out of meat. That way you don't have to pass a law, you just nudge people into that. Hmm. Why? Well, I know the answer. 25% don't even know where we came from. They have no idea that we broke away from England. If you don't know who we broke away from, you certainly don't know why we broke away. Because you never want to have somebody have that much power. Now, can we afford the $1.4 billion of a new, brand new bureaucracy? Why not give the money to the soldiers? What do you say? who are just earning just above the poverty line or just below the poverty line. They're also in Congress moving on the DREAM Act. The DREAM Act would allow anyone younger than 35 who came here to the U.S., they're going to they're be granted legal status. If they agree, agree to go to college or join the military or work in certain other government agencies for two years, oh, that's perfect. The real concern here is there's, there's no cap on how many illegal immigrants will eventually gain legal status. Also another concern, youth who eventually become citizens thanks to the DREAM Act will be able to bring their close relatives, including their parents who originally entered the country illegally into the U.S. as legal immigrants. May I ask, what is this going to cost us? What is this going to do to add all of this to the system, to the perfect storm? Every night I come to you and I say there's a storm coming. Every night. But I, I tell you, I'm very, very close to just saying, kind of close the doors on the shelf cellar, guys. If, if you're not seeing it yet, you never will. Because it's time just to start talking to the people who will pay attention, who will pull their head out of there, and start paying attention. There's good news. This is the state of the country, but it is not who we are. Now, there, there are pawns and there are defenders. The question is, which is there more of, pawns or defenders? My father, my father, he used to build these chicken houses on his farm. And they were the, they were the ugliest chicken houses. We were um, in Texas this weekend, and I looked at these barns, and they were, they were all red and identical, and they, had, they were really nice. And I said, what are those? And the guy said, oh, those are chicken houses. I said, get out of here. Because my grandfather, they were ugly chicken houses. Why? 
because he would take old windows from some other somebody else's barn and an old door from someplace else. At one point, he put doors up, and I think he just put tar paper over the doors and nailed it all in place, and that was the roof of the chicken house. And all nothing matched in any of his chicken houses. Why? He did that because one thing I learned from him is you have to make do with what you have. When you're in a situation like this, you have to put a roof over your head or you have to, you have to put a roof over the chickens' heads or you have to save your country. You have to look at what you have and then use what you do have. Make do with this. Well, what do we do with this? By the end of the show, I will show you how you can reverse this. Then on Thursday night, I'm going to be um, out in Pittsburgh. And I'm doing a live show there, and they're beaming it via satellite uh, throughout movie theaters all across the country. And it's to um, go over this book, which I worked really long and hard on, over a year. And I don't know how many people we had working on it, maybe 30 people. This is the beginning of the answer. And I want to have a little town hall meeting with you. So if you happen to have the time and you can afford to go to the movie theater on Thursday night, will you please join me? I want to have a town hall meeting. I would like to explain, what do we do? What do we do? Before we break, one more thing that I'm going to add to this list, and I'll do it next. All right, there is another piece of the perfect storm. This is what is happening to our country, and this is going to be the solution in a minute. But there is another piece, because this really is, this is, this is the enemy within. The enemy without, we've been fighting now for quite some time, it's Al-Qaeda. And they have now vowed to destroy us by a thousand paper cuts. They call it Operation Hemorrhage, bleed us to death. But there's, there's something that you need to understand. They don't mean body count. They don't mean our actual blood. They're not, they're not doing that. They're now going to cause maximum economic damage. I want you to look at their words. Our objective is not maximum kill, but to cause a hemorrhage in the aviation industry, an industry that is so vital for trade and transportation between the U.S. and Europe. Why? Why? Because they understand that our mortar is materialism. We'll kill each other if we take our stuff away. Can't let that happen. They have realized they cannot defeat us militarily, and our main weakness is the economy. And they can pit each other. We can. Everybody's pitting us against each other. But the same way, rich versus poor. And they're going to keep cutting and cutting and cutting until there's nothing left to cut anymore. They will not stop until every last drop of our economic blood has dripped out. But they're not the only ones who are cutting at us this way. We've shown you all the anti-free market radicals who have gone from afraid to show their face to being in and around the White House and this administration, and they are actively seeking to crumble the free market system and rebuild it as a socialist utopia. I don't know. I don't know why anybody in the media doesn't find this important. Oh, they'll talk about the military. They'll talk about, oh, there's another Timothy McVeigh someplace, but they'll never talk about these people. Why? Why? More of these like-minded people showed up at a convention in L.A. earlier this month. It was the Party of Socialism and Liberation Conference. Nobody's showing this on TV. Let me show you the highlights. Listen. We must kill capitalism or it's going to kill us. The working class will fight because it must. The question is, will there be a revolutionary party present, available with trained organizers and cadres, to take advantage of that struggle, to take advantage of that moment, and build for a fight. Into the south, into the trailer parks, the ghettos, the barrios, and the prisons, and anywhere workers are, and organize them to unite based on their class interests and overthrow the capitalist class. Do you understand this? They are looking for pawns into the trailer parks and the prisons, and they're going to use class warfare. We've got our administration pitting the poor against the rich. And you have people on the streets that they are connected with. Bottom up, top down, inside out. You get as many pawns as you can. We told you on this program that this administration is using a lot of the tactics first devised by the Weather Underground. 
The Weather Underground used the same strategy back in the 1960s, except they didn't do rich versus poor. Instead, they used race, race to get their pawns. But that's being played as well. This is from the 1960s. Quote, Blacks have been oppressed and held in inferior social position as a people. They have a right to decide, organize, and act on their own common destiny, a destiny as a people apart from white interference. By the way, in 1970, if you were black in America, you had a better chance of getting a college education in America than a white man did in Great Britain. Did you know that? Why? That's 1969. Let me show you this. Today, Marxists, they're not, called, they're not hiding anymore. A Marxist in North Carolina told the technician online website, quote, it's power we have got to change. It's not just giving stuff out. It's about power. That's our struggle. It's a fight for power. Right now, we see uh, who has all the power in our country, and it's the corporate elite, which is mainly white men. So you got it. So where does it leave us? It leaves us here. Pawns versus defenders. Not defenders of capitalism, but defenders of freedom, the defenders of the right to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. America, ask your friends and neighbors, what do we progress past? What is a higher ideal than all men are created equal and endowed by their creator with certain unalienable rights? Life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Tell me what is a grander idea than that. Which one are you? You may say you're not a pawn. Be very careful. Are there enough defenders or are there more pawns? See, our enemies need pawns. Why? Because they're wildly outnumbered. How many Al Qaeda members do you think there really are in America? How many? I mean, I've left, I know we've left the border open for 10 years, but how many? How many communists are there? 5,000? 100,000? Let's be generous. Let's say there's 5 million. That leaves well over 300 million people to defend. We outnumber them. They lose, except, except if you are a pawn and you're used. Remember what he said? Are there enough to organize and capitalize on it? We lose if there are too many pawns. How do you make pawns? You make sure there's a lack of education. Why was it illegal to help a slave learn how to read? Because if they could read, they could figure it out. Too many people, too many people don't have any idea that we gained our independence from Great Britain in 1776. Too many people get their news from Comedy Central. Did you ever hear your mother or father say, oh, I get my news from Johnny Carson? That's a comedy show. This is an opinion show. There's news on this network as well. Know the difference. We have to change possible pawns to defenders. So how do we do that? I'll show you next. America is broke. And Glenn Beck is going to fix it. See Glenn Beck rebuild America's engine on stage December 2nd with an encore December 8th in a theater near you. Tickets on sale now at fathomevents.com.